Hey everyone, this is Mukesh Otwani once again from learnhyperdimension.com. Today in this video, we are going to talk about how you can automate Google search functionality using Selenium WebDriver. Now, when I say Google search functionality, it's basically autocomplete. It's not only limited to Google. Let's say you are automating any application where you have autocomplete or I will say Ajax call. So basically, the moment you type some keywords, you will be getting some suggestions. You want to select these suggestions and you want to do some operations. You take any application, Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra, autocomplete is by default in each and every application. Sometimes in, in interviews also, they can quickly ask you, can you quickly write one uh, small script where you can type on Google, get some auto suggestion, select one of the option and continue. So let's see how it works. So for example, I have taken google.com. Now if I type any simple keyword, okay, you take any keyword of your choice, the concept will remain same. In my case, the moment I type my name, you can see I'm getting a lot of suggestions, right? Now, first thing that we need to do is write one quick XPath or CSS selector, which should match with all these elements. For example, if I right click on this and if I click on inspect, you will notice this is basically our UL tag, right? If I just put mouse over, this is the UL tag. UL means unordered list. So in HTML, we have two tags, UL and OL. UL means unordered, OL means ordered list. This is UL. Now if I expand this, you will notice the first option, which is Mukesh Otwani Selenium is coming under LI. Second option is coming Mukesh Otwani Courses. Then in a similar way, GitHub, Selenium, Python, and so on. We found a pattern that if I reach till UL and then LI, I should be able to get all these options, right? Now, if you watch this carefully, this is a UL tag. It has three attributes, JS name, class, and role. I have seen people make mistakes. They take JS name and the class name. Please don't do that because it's a dynamic one, right? Now, when I say dynamic, this might change. So next time when you refresh the page or maybe next time you open this application, you might see a different class name. So we are going to use this attribute called role, which is list box. So I will quickly write one XPath. I will press Ctrl F from my keyboard. You can see this is a search bar. Double slash UL. I'm looking for a UL tag. And now I'm saying I'm looking for a role called list box, right? Now you can see I'm getting one of two. One is hidden, one is visible. I want to go with the first one. After this, we can see we have UL. So again, I will say find all the so not UL, it's LI. I'm looking for all the LI. So double forward slash is basically relative XPath. I'm looking for the complete page. So first I'm reaching till UL. Inside UL, I need all the LI. And all these 10 matching nodes are coming, right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so 1 to 10. Now I just need this XPath in order to continue. Now let's go back to Eclipse. Now I'm using Eclipse, but if you're using IntelliJ VS Code, the concept will remain same. I'm going to quickly create one class and I will say Google search. Now I'm using public static void main because I'm not using any testing framework as of now. But let's say if you're using JUnit or TestNG, feel free to use any test annotation and continue. Now for this demo, I will be taking Chrome, but if you're using Firefox, Edge browser or Safari browser, it will not make any changes. Okay. The concept will remain same. So I'm going to use driver.get. So for driver.get, I will use this URL. Now, first thing is basically, let me copy this XPath so that we can use it. Okay. So let me copy command C command V. Now, before I get this auto suggestion, I need to type something, right? So for this, what I will do, I will quickly go ahead and search. Notice this is a text area. And again, we have multiple attributes here. I can see we have a class area control area on autofocus and so on. Now you have to pick the selector very smartly. What I mean, if you just take this class name, right it's it's a very dynamic again it will change area control looks very dynamic please don't take it so try to find something which is matching as per the ui element and it should not be dynamic 
in this case i can see title equal to search it makes sense because we're using a google search right so i can write a quick xpath that find a text area where title equal to search or i can use find a text area where area label equal to search or i can use this name don't take id because id is dynamic i can find directly name equal to qq means query right so depends on what select you're using let me use this title which is looking more promising so i will say find a text area where at the rate title equal to search i can see one option so i will go ahead and say find element by xpath and i'm using the same which is let's say mukesh utwani please use a different text if you want since i was dealing with single element i use find element now i'm dealing with 10 elements right so in selenium whenever you have more than one web element you will go with find elements so type driver dot find elements this time and i will be using by dot xpath and this is the xpath that we have copied right so i will simply paste here so when you go with find element it returns a single web element but the moment i use find elements it returns me list of web elements so it's basically list is coming from collection so if you come across a different question also in interviews let's like say where do you use collection in selenium with find elements since it is returning me a list i will say store in a list of web element and i will say all options now just to cross check whether we have all the elements or not what i will do i will get the size so i will write here total count from suggestion is now i will be using this list reference which is all options and i will say dot size size method will give me how many items we have in a list in case in my uh, search right now it's showing 10 in case it is showing 5 2 10 15 it will just keep on varying depends on the list now let's see if i want to capture the text because right now if you search it says mukesh utwani it is showing now different text now since i have all the element in a list I can pick one element I can capture the text and print capture another element capture the text and print so basically I will be running a for loop you can use iterator you can use while loop it's up to you so while running a loop I will get elements one by one then I will use one method called get text which will return me the text which is visible so let's say if I want to go with for loop now this is my list right and this list contains web elements so every time when i will iterate each time i will be getting a single web element only so on the left hand side you need to write what kind of elements you have in our case it's a web element on the right hand side after colon you can write the list so one by one i will be getting list uh, sorry one by one i will be getting web elements now i can capture the text so this is my element I will use a method called get text. Now this get text method will return me text which is visible. Now let me print this. I will say text values and I will print this text. We'll go step by step. Okay. <clears throat> right now I'm just printing. So if it is printing all the values, it means we're able to fetch them. Then we can put our conditions that do you want to click? Do you want to verify? It's totally up to you. So it's opening google.com. It will type. And can you see? It shows total count is 10. And one by one, it has fetched all the values, Selenium, Courses, GitHub, Python, YouTube, Playwright, LinkedIn, and so on. So over most of the part is done, we are able to fetch all the values. Now it depends on the condition, you want to verify the values, you want to click on something, you want to check whether this keyword is present or not, it's totally up to you. 
let's say in my case i want to click on youtube so type something and from this suggestion click on youtube okay shoot on youtube now since we get the text we got the text what i can do i can write if condition and i can say if text contains youtube then i need to click but where do we click we will click on web element okay we cannot click on text text is basically a string so click method is coming from web element so i will say ele dot click now interesting part here is see youtube is coming on the fifth place and this loop will run 10 times right so if i don't terminate this loop what will happen it will keep on searching for the next element and you might come across exceptions so once your condition is done it's good to apply a break it means if this condition satisfied click on that element break this loop so that it should come out of this for loop now let's execute once again so yes it's loading slow today i don't know why so depends on the internet connection it will load accordingly okay now i typed and here we go now notice the moment it found youtube it clicked on it and here you can see after youtube since we are breaking it it's not printing the next value we'll further optimize this code but this is what they are expecting so first you type then you get 10 elements you store them in a list run a for loop so that you can get all these elements capture the text once you capture the text now you can put the condition in our case the situation was if the text contains youtube click on it and then break now this is for loop now this is actually for each or you can say enhance for loop but let's say if you want to go with basic for loop can we do that answer is yes so in that case what i will do uh, i can create a separate program or i can comment this piece of code so from here to here i can comment now let's write a basic for loop so when you say basic for loop you need to start with with one variable so i will take one variable and i will take default like initial value 0 so total 10 values i have so i will start from 0 to 9 so in order to run i need the size so i will use this and i will say okay give me the size and every time i will increment by 1 so basically this loop will run from 0 to 9 now how do we capture the value from the list so if you use this uh, all options in list we have a method called get method which says if you give me index it will go to that list it will check if that index have the value it will return so i will put i here so we will be getting web element Now once I get the web element, I can capture the text again. So I can say text value and I can say element dot get text. See this was quite straightforward. We don't have to write condition. We don't have to write increment decrement. We don't have to initialize. But when you go with basic for loop, you have to write, uh, you have to initialize one variable, write the condition increment decrement. Now if I execute with this basic for loop and yeah, starting. Still loading. Now once the loading will stop, it will type. Yes. and here we go and we got the values so concept will remain same now there's a quick assignment for all of you i want you to try the same thing with while loop and let me know are you able to get the result or not now one interesting part i want to show you before we end that this is actually a very generic scenario Okay, when I say very generic scenario that 
when you go with any application you will definitely come across the same scenario so if you think from a framework perspective we can actually create a method a reusable method which will accept the argument and it can perform the same thing so it can accept the locator plus it will also accept what values you want to find or click so we can create a reusable method so what we can do we can do the control x now i will write a quick method now if you're using proper framework you will be creating separate class in that class you will be writing method right now i'm creating the method in the same class or let's do one thing let me create another class called utility we don't need public static void main this is a generic method which i'm creating so i will be using this method as public i will make static so that i can directly call using class name i will keep void because i don't want to return anything and i will say get all elements or you can give a method name called click on element from list okay and i will copy paste here now one thing that you will notice here is basically it is asking what is this options so let me create one argument call list of web element it means this method will accept a list so whatever list we will pass it can iterate it can capture the text it can click on it now if you want to use this method how you will use it this i can remove i will directly say utility and dot click on element so you can see it is asking me give me the list we can pass this list the moment you call this method it will go here pass this list get this element one by one capture the text and continue so now let me run once again and see the results now let it run in the meanwhile uh you can also use here called java streams so if you don't want to write this for loop while loop and for each you can use java streams you can achieve the same result yeah so it will continue now and you will get the results so this is how you can automate google search functionality or any application which have auto complete auto search so i hope this will help if yes then do support this channel share this video with your friends colleague who are struggling with this and if you have any question in the mind that you want me to cover in the next video let me know and i will see you in the next video till then bye bye take care